Hey everybody and welcome to my video. You already saw the title so let's just get into it. My objective today is to try and beat the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask without using the Song of Time at all after the first cycle. Or more specifically, to beat the game in under 6 days, hence under a week. Now just a warning, I haven't played this game in probably well over a year, so I don't think I'm actually going to pull this off, but we're definitely going to give it our best shot. Rules are pretty simple. The only real rules are I can't play the normal Song of Time. I can still use the inverted Song of Time and the Song of Double Time. I just can't use the normal Song of Time. As a result, I'm out of time limit and I have to beat the game as soon as I possibly can. The other rule is to try and not use any glitches because I want to try and do this under the constraints of the game without trying to abuse any of its mechanics. Just one more note, but I always do these attempts on my Twitch channel. If you're interested, the link's in the description. Okay, with all that said and done, let's get into the run. The beginning of the game goes hardly any different than it normally does in any other playthrough. It's just trying to get everything set up before the end of the 3 day cycle so that we can go up the top of the clock tower and confront Skull Kid there. Nonetheless, I still struggled here because I honestly could not remember anything about this part of the game. I was only able to find a stray fairy at night. I have no idea where it is during the day. I also had to beat the bombers in their game of hide and seek and I guess tag. Is this what Cops and Robbers is like? I would not know, I never actually had friends when I was growing up. But I was really strapped for time. I actually thought I was going to fail this because I never could find all the bombers. I actually did not know that one of the bombers was just standing right where I thought Seikon would be hiding. And I never bothered to check because I thought that that bomber was Seikon. And I just thought it'd be a waste of time to do it. But sure enough, I did find all the bombers in time. With like one hour left to spare, which is like less than 30 seconds. So I did get the password to the bomber's hideout and we were finally able to make progress with the story. I think it's the moon's tear. You ever wonder why the moon is actually crying? I think that the moon doesn't want to crash into Clock Town and kill everyone. I feel like it's just being forced to, it's under duress. And it's trying so hard to resist and it's so painful for it too. The moon really is a good guy and I bet it just wants to be killed so it doesn't kill everyone. I feel sorry for this thing. Without much left I could think to do, I decided to then get some more rupees to get the adult wallet and then end the first cycle afterwards. And now the true run begins. With both the Song of Healing and the Deku Mask in my possession, I make a beeline straight for Woodfall. In fact, in my haste to get out of Clock Town as soon as possible to head for Woodfall, I completely forgot to get my rupees out of the bank, to get the bomb bag from the bomb shop, and to hit the owl statue in Clock Town allow me to walk back here after getting the Song of Soaring. I know what you're thinking, I'll think it for you. You are made of stupid. Yeah, pretty bad start. The one thing I didn't forget, and it's probably also the most important part, is to also use the inverted Song of Time to slow down the day as much as I possibly can and get myself as much time as I could possibly need. But you know what? It's all fine. Because this challenge will be a learning process. Like I said before, I don't have very much experience with Majora's Mask, and I'm going to have to do a lot of on-the-fly thinking, especially with the dungeons, because I'm very unfamiliar with a lot of their loadouts. So I will be optimizing this attempt, and we will be doing much better in any subsequent attempts too. By the way, I'm using the Wii U gamepad because I'm playing this on the Wii U Virtual Console, and I freaking hate this controller so much because the inputs that come from a control stick are not conducive to having to use directional buttons which are emulated on the Nintendo 64. There's a lot of misinputs I make and you can expect to see a lot of screw ups that will also likely waste us time. The game proceeds as normal. We get our first bottle and we're going to be requiring this bottle for later on as we go to the Deku Palace. As far as Deku Palace, I actually get through this area really freaking fast. Like I am getting through this maze and getting past these guards with like no trouble whatsoever. And I get the magic beans really quickly too. I then proceed to waste the water I just got so easily from where I got the magic beans when I was trying to plant the freaking beans in the soil. So that wasted a lot of time because I had to go all the way back to Woodfall Swamp to get more fresh water and then water the beans then. Eh, but whatever. We got the Song of Awakening now. And then on my way to Woodfall Temple, I do get the Song of Soaring, which would be nice to start doing some teleporting around the area. But then I also realized that, that I did not hit the Owl Statue in Clock Town, so we have to walk all the way back there and waste precious time. Fun! Now, Woodfall Temple is a pretty simple temple, so I'm mainly just trying to get a feel for where I'm supposed to go and find out which rooms I'm supposed to avoid. Because of how simple this temple is, I want to avoid getting both the dungeon map and the compass because they really don't do me any good. And this is also something I want to try doing for the later dungeons too. 
if I know where everything is, I don't need to waste time getting dungeon items that will only serve to waste my time because of the fights that I have to do in order to get the items anyway. I also found myself in this room of all these freaking blobs of shadow, and I have to admit that I actually got jump scared here. But not by these blobs, it's because I'm trying to use an item, and I hecking equip my Deku mask, and I see these glowing sad eyes, and it just scares the bejesus out of me. Oh. Okay, that freaking scared me for a second. I couldn't even tell what that was. But the rest of the adventure goes about as normal as you'd expect. I get the bow and arrow and then make my way to Odawa. Okay, real talk. I have no freaking idea how to fight Odawa. This guy is so unpredictable. There are times when I can hit him and I can probably get some damage in, but it doesn't really amount to much. But I kind of like that about this boss. It feels like we're on equal footing. I mean, I have a lot of health, but it doesn't really do that much damage either. And while I can cycle through attacks as much as I want, he also has a lot of attacks to look out for. I need to find a better way to beat him though, because if I keep taking this long, that's going to bode very poorly for the rest of the challenge. I may need to come back with something else if I want to have a better shot at this. Oh yeah, and all the missed inputs I keep making. As if I only needed even more difficulty to fighting this freaking boss. I, I need to get a better control scheme for the gamepad, I swear. And this is just embarrassing. I actually would have died to this boss if I didn't get heart drops from the enemies that the boss spawns. I am that bad. After several whole minutes, I just get to a point where I get him stunned and I just spam the spin attack hoping that he eventually just dies. I'm freaking desperate and sure enough, he does die to the spin attack. So, not a proud fight. I admit, I could have done better, but I don't know how to do better. Now at this point, I really did not think I had much of a chance at beating the game under these restrictions, so I decided to also go ahead and rescue the monkey that was being tortured by the Deku King. So I get the princess in the bottle, and I also am trying to look for the exit, but the exit is right in front of me, so I waste a lot of time just in the freaking swamp, trying to find my way out, when the way out was literally just right there. And that was not fun either. Also, after reaching the Deku Palace, I take my mask off by accident trying to release the princess from the bottle and get thrown out. Man, I hate this freaking control scheme. In fact, I was later on going to try and change the control scheme because I know you can actually change what the buttons do in the gamepad. But for some reason, I can't change the directional buttons on the left side to actually work for the, like the C stick. And just for the record, but I am not trying to complain just for the sake of complaining. I actually later on in this challenge tried to change what the buttons did because I know that on the Wii U you can actually map the buttons to be for different buttons. It doesn't have to be the default. But for some reason, I can't map like the yellow buttons for the Nintendo 64 for the directional pad that you would see on the left side of the Nintendo Wii U gamepad. And I just find it to be so stupid because that'd be such a perfect fit, but the game just won't allow me to do it. Thanks Nintendo! We are now back in Termina as we have now finished with Woodfall and we're trying to get into the mountains to reach Snowhead Temple. And now for a math question. I have three arrows, I need to hit at least two on the ice to knock it down and open the way up to Snowhead, and I only hit one. What happens afterwards? Time's up, the answer is L. Oh, what's that? You didn't have an L option? Oh, that's my bad. Okay, here, I'll give you an L to hold right now. So making my way up the mountains, and I also now realize that I don't have bombs, and I don't know where to get the bombs, and then I remember I have to go back to Clock Town and buy the bombs from the bomb shop. Wow, I suck at this game. Hey, remember the Ice Age baby and how we all hate that? Let's hate on this Goron baby too, because he's just as annoying as the Ice Age one. And all of a sudden, Wolfos, which I also find annoying, even though you may not be used to hearing that, but Z-targeting with these control scheme is kind of hard. But hey, at least Tingle is safe from them. I get some hot water from a dead man's grave, and then I use it to open up some more hot water, miss when dropping the hot water when trying to fout the baby's father, get the Goron Lullaby intro, and then I get killed. Whoop, there it goes. Yep, my brain stopped. Anyway, as we climb Snowhead Temple, I would like for you all to pay very close attention to the time limit that we still have. Because I can promise you, we spend a lot of time in this freaking dungeon. Snowhead Temple was a pain in my butt. Like, no joke, this area ate up so much of my time, it's not even funny. Now, a lot of it really would be my fault for not being very familiar, as I do waste a lot of time here just not knowing where to go, but this also makes something especially clear. I'm not going to be able to beat this challenge on this attempt, 
but there are also more reasons beyond this that explain why I can't. I implore you all to watch this video to the very end, I'm going to go into detail on why that is the case. There were a good few times also where I got knocked out and died in the middle of the dungeon too. I think like twice, which I'm not proud of either, but oh well, I don't have a lot of health either, so I guess it's just to be expected. I also have an issue when I find out about the map and the compass, but it actually would be a lot more ideal to just find them on my first attempt because I get a better idea of where to go and I waste less time just being lost, not knowing which rooms I haven't visited yet. But when I actually get it planned out what route I want to take, then I'll definitely want to avoid the map and the compass if I have to go out of my way like doing a battle to get them. Of course, as useful as the compass is for uncovering items within the dungeon I want to grab, it's amazing how I end up finding a lot of stray fairies and I don't want them because I just consider them a waste of time. Some point later in the dungeon we start battling Wizrobes. And Wizrobe can be a little bit annoying, especially when I can't really properly control where I aim. But he wasn't really too bad. I got to a point where I just took a strategy of running up against a wall and then trying to get an eye on which one was not moving and then aiming for that because that tends to be the one that's real. I was actually doing pretty well, all things considered. And now this part. Okay, real talk. This pillar stumped me for much, much longer than I would care to admit. So you hit the switch one time and it causes all of these blocks to just rise up from the ground. And as a Goron, you're supposed to punch them all out so that you can actually reach the next Wiz robe and then reach the boss of the area, Goat. Here's the problem though. There's a reset switch directly below it. And I thought that I actually had to press it down at some point, but I don't. And this was where so much confusion just stemmed from. I was stuck at this area for 50 freaking minutes trying to understand why this switch even existed. And I was constantly coming back to depress it because I thought I had to do it if I wanted to hit more of these ice blocks out of the way. I did not know that I only had to hit the yellow switch one time and never again. But we finally got through that dungeon and now we can battle goats. Now I'm used to goat being very easy. All I really do is just use the Goron roll, I bum rush him and we just put some repeat. But this time around, I was having a lot more trouble and I didn't really understand why. I was getting knocked out of the sky with lightning and I was just unable to really catch up to him a lot either because his bombs were also stopping me in my tracks. I even died to him at some point, which yeah, I had a fairy on me because I don't know, I felt like there was probably a chance of this happening, but I feel kind of bad that I had to use a fairy here because it makes me feel like I just sucked at this fight. Like I never needed fairies for this fight before. What's wrong? But yeah, as much as I do hate to admit it, this boss may be struggle, but we beat him. If that counts for anything, probably not, but it does. It's a thing to happen. And unfortunately, that's as far as we get. So, we have roughly 17 hours left in game, and we still have two whole dungeons, not even counting like the Pirate's Fortress for the Great Bay and Ikana Castle for Ikana Canyon. So, we're not going to be able to do that with the time we have left. It's just not possible. We don't have nearly enough time anymore. As if that wasn't bad enough, we can't even access the Great Bay or Ikana Canyon. Why? Because we don't have Epona. Because keep in mind, Epona is still trapped at Romani Ranch. We can't get her out of there. So how are we going to continue any further without her? In order for us to rescue Epona, we would have to be able to beat the second dungeon in a timely enough manner so that we can also get the powder keg from the Golarons to blow up the boulder. And we have to do that before the aliens abduct and probe Romani. That would take us a huge crunch in time. But not only that, but consider the fact that we have to get Epona out, then we'd have to do it even earlier. Yeah, the truth of the matter is while we wasted as much time as we did at Snowhead Temple, we really did not have much else to look forward to anyway, because without Epona, we're stuck. So that's, what are we gonna do? Without much else I could think to really do for the rest of this attempt, I just went to draw my sorrows in some dog races. It didn't go too poorly. We had some wins. We had a lot of losses though. And they got raided and that was pretty cool. Shout out to Game Champ 3000. But yeah, after all of that, we decided to also do some bomb jump practicing just because we failed the challenge. So we may as well have just done something to pass the time. 
as we waited for the moon to fall. And I did eventually have it figured out because I had someone in my stream chat tell me how to do it. Just don't hold the A button and the bomb will blow me over the wall. It's actually pretty easy to time. And then we also put Mikhail to rest. But before we do that, we have to sing a song for him. One, two, three. Oh, baby, baby, listen to me. The carnival's beginning soon. We're the ones that are waiting to see. But that girl, our vocalist, she laid some strange eggs and she lost her voice. You can't hear what she says. Well, oh, in Great Bay now, something is a happening, is it now? Baby. Oh, baby, listen to me. I don't want to beg to real pirate if they sold that girl's eggs. Oh. I went to stop the Jiru with the pirates, then pow and bam. I got knocked down and here I am. Baby! Baby, if I die like this, even if I die, it won't be in peace, that's for sure. Oh. Somebody please rescue her eggs before the tyrants take their toll. Oh, somebody, somebody, please heal my soul. That's all. Thank you. And after that, we just go to Clock Town to confront the Skull Kid again, because what else are we going to do? And we end up having to call the two giants. The two giants fail to do anything. And that's it. We failed. Good question. No idea. <laughs> yep, we dealt with a terrible fate. All in all, for a first attempt, I'm still pretty happy with this. I know we could have gotten farther, but realistically speaking, with how little practice I even really put into this game, getting as far as we did, I don't think it's really that bad, but we can definitely do a lot better. How we can do better though, for one, we need to have a plan. So I'm thinking about playing this game more on my Twitch channel and trying to get a better idea of what route I want to take, when I should maybe try to leave dungeons, what items to bring, and just routing everything out so that we can get through this all as efficiently as possible. And we may actually have a chance at beating the game that time. Now on the surface, it looks like we hit the halfway point because we managed to awaken two of the four giants. But the reality is far from that. See, the problem is that the Great Bay and Akana Canyon are much longer um, corridors of the game to get through. You have the Pirate's Fortress, the whole egg rescuing quest, that thing with um, Macau's girlfriend, and then you have to do the whole temple for Great Bay. There's a lot there. And Akanya Canyon has even more of that because you have to handle like the little girl's father, the, you know, the well, Akana Castle, and then you have two different versions of the Stone Tower Temple to go through. And the bosses, of course. Like, there's still a lot more that are let us stuff to be covered. We had not gotten to the halfway point. Maybe a little over a quarter, but definitely not halfway. There's also Epona, and we have to work very fast to have a chance at rescuing Epona. We did not come close to getting her in this attempt. But on the other hand, we did get all of the transformation masks. We got the Zora one near the very end of the attempt, but we did still get Macau. So that does count for something, I think. Something that we can try is not battling Odawa as soon as we get to the Woodfall Temple. We can get the bow and arrow and then leave for Snowhead. And if we're fast enough, we can probably finish Snowhead Temple and rescue Wapuna before it's too late. Like I said before, this was a learning experience. Keep in mind, this was only my first attempt we can go a lot farther than this if we had ample practice. And in the future, when I come back to this challenge, I will definitely do a lot better than I did this time. For now though, I'd like for you all to watch my single Pokemon challenge where I use a single Shedinja to play through the entirety of Pokemon Platinum. Check the iCard in the top right corner for that. If that video is not out yet, then watch some of my single Pokemon challenges. I've done videos ranging from Zubat to Nidoran to Skitty to even Lapras because I'm certain you'll find something that you'll enjoy in that playlist. I'll see you all next time, y'all, and thank you all for watching. That's a wrap.